Well, good morning, everyone, and I hope you're having a great Tuesday morning. Thank you so much for taking some of your time to uh, be a part of our Tuesday morning time of prayer and devotion as we're simply walking through uh, the book of James. So I'm going to give uh, everybody just a few minutes to sign on. Had a few technical issues getting started, but uh, if you're watching this morning and everything seems to be coming through okay, if you can just let me know in the comments there that uh, the sound and the video is, is okay, that would be helpful to me because I did have some technical issues this morning. But uh, if you're watching and everything looks good, if you'll just say, okay, sounds good, looks good. Anybody, let's see here if I can update my page that I'm on. All right, let's try this out here. Technology, love technology. When it works, it works great. And uh, when it doesn't, it doesn't. Everything's good. Thank you, Rose. Appreciate that. Good deal. All right. Well, let's uh, cut this sound here off. Okay. Good deal. Well, thank you uh, for taking time, like I say, out of your schedule to be a part of our uh, Tuesday morning time of prayer and devotion. I want to just uh, begin by opening with a word of prayer. Then we're going to jump right in. This uh, lesson today is going to really tie in well with what we looked at last Tuesday. So let me pray for us, and then we'll jump right in and study. Father, thank you for everybody that's tuned in today. Thank you for another day that you've given us. And Father, uh, just a beautiful day, uh, beautiful uh, weather outside, temperature-wise. It was nice this morning just to be able to get out on the porch for a few minutes uh, with a cup of coffee and just to be able to enjoy the beauty of your creation. Father, I pray that we would not take the uh, little things like that for granted, Lord, but we would keep our eyes uh, attuned to the things that you are doing even in our midst, Lord, as we are going through this pandemic, I pray that you would help us today as we open up your word to continue to study through the book of James, that you would just give us insight and direction. And uh, we love you and we thank you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you will, go ahead and grab your Bibles. We're going to be in James chapter 1, and we're going to be looking at verses 22 through 25 this morning. James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. The Bible says, But prove yourselves doers of the word, and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides in it, by, abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer. This man will be blessed in what he does. So last week we discussed the qualities, uh, the necessary qualities, and, and learned that, that many of us possess qualities, but the question that we ask ourselves was, do we possess these necessary qualities that James speaks of. If you remember from last Tuesday, I said that a quality is a characteristic or a feature. And uh, do you remember what the three qualities were that James pointed out? Look back at verse 19. The three qualities, you must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Now, if you're honest this morning, I know uh, that, that you may struggle with those at times. And uh, these should be the qualities that mark the life of a Christian. But uh, it's not that you perfect them necessarily, but they're evident in your life. We've got to always keep in mind that, uh, that we've still got this, uh, this rotten, nasty flesh. Although we uh, have been bought by the blood of, of Christ, we have the Spirit of God living and dwelling in us. Uh, we still have this battle. Paul speaks of that in Romans chapter 7. If you want to write that down, you can go back and look at uh, Romans chapter 7 later and see the struggle that Paul had, but uh, we still wrestle uh, with this flesh. But the question I asked was, do you possess these necessary qualities? So today what we're going to do is we're going to move from looking at the necessary qualities to the necessary actions. I'm sure you've heard uh, it said before that actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. So there are three things that I want you to see concerning the necessary actions. The first is this. As a Christian, you have responsibilities. Look at what uh, James says in verse 22. He says, But prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. 
So we all have certain responsibilities in life. And as Christians, you also have a a responsibility as well. I I like to refer to it it as the great responsibility. And the responsibilities that are necessary for us to follow. Now James has already told us in verse 21 that you're to lay aside filthiness, wickedness, and all forms of sin. Keeping in mind that those are, are temptations that we are faced with on a daily basis. However, it doesn't stop there. You must simply not just lay those things aside. Uh, You must pursue righteousness and holiness, and as a result, these necessary actions follow. Now, this reminds me of a story that Jesus told in the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 11. I'm going to turn over there and read this text for you. Luke, chapter 11. Uh, In Luke, chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. Listen to this story. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Amen. Luke chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. Listen to what God's Word says here. When the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places, seeking rest, and not finding any, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it swept and put in order. Then it goes and takes along seven other spirits, more evil than itself, And they go in and live there, and the last state of the man becomes worse than the first. So here uh, Luke is speaking of this unclean spirit that was cast out of a man. And then it goes through these dry places seeking rest, and it finds none. And then the spirit returns to the old house, which is now clean and in order, along with these uh, unclean spirits, seven other others that come to occupy this dwelling. And, and why is that the case? Because when it's left unoccupied and not filled with God's Spirit, uh, the devil can take up residence there. So I, I, that, that comes to mind as I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about what we're looking at here. We're talking about these necessary actions. We're talking about these necessary qualities. We're to lay all of this stuff aside, but it doesn't stop there. Much like the case that we find here in Luke chapter 11. Once the house has been swept clean, it doesn't stop there. It's got to be occupied with something, either with the unclean spirits or with the Holy Spirit, uh, God himself. So we've got to lay all of these other things aside, but not just lay these other things aside. Notice what the Bible says in verse 22, but... This conjunction, but you're to do this. James says to do these things. Now, I think that James has uh, one thing in mind here. I think he has the word hypocrisy in mind, uh, the hypocrite in mind, a person who pretends to be something that they are not. And he doesn't want you to deceive yourself, and he doesn't want you to mislead others. So keep in mind, he's speaking here of these responsibilities that you have as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, these necessary qualities, first and foremost, that we looked at last week, but also these necessary actions. So keep in mind that you have responsibilities. Uh, You've probably heard it said before that uh, many people have the mindset, even believers in the church, that you're to to sit and soak and sour. Sit in the pew, uh, soak up the word that you hear, and then sour. But that's not the case. We are to be, as James says, doers of the word. Not just hearers, but doers. So notice, secondly, that hearing is not enough, verses 23 and 24. So James provides a very practical example, and what he does here is he uses these two individuals. Notice the first man is a man who simply hears. I want to ask you a question this morning. What did you see when you walked in the bathroom and looked in the mirror? I mean, if you're like me, you looked at your face and you examined your face and you make, made sure your face was clean and you, your teeth were shiny and, uh, you know, you didn't have any wrinkles in your forehead when you did this uh, and, and so forth and so on. But the mirror reveals the truth of how your face really looks. And when we look at God's Word, God's Word is truth and it's the mirror that shows us really who we are. And when we look at God's Word, when we intently look at God's Word, we see that He's given us these instructions, and these instructions are for a purpose. We know that the Bible is our basic instructions before leaving earth, and the Bible gives us the instructions that we need to live the life that God has called us to live. So notice that this man observes himself, he recognizes his need, but he does nothing about it. 
It would be like us going into the bathroom and looking at, at in the mirror and seeing our hair all out of whack and we've got stuff on our face and we just walk away from the mirror and we do nothing about it. But no, what do we do? We stand there at the mirror, we get the wash rag, we, we clean our face up, we, we fix our hair up and we make sure that we look nice. We do something about it. So this man, he forgets what he looks like, uh, but, but what kind of person he was. Uh, although the mirror re- reveals his physical appearances and his physical needs, the mirror here refers to something much greater. Hearing is not enough. Action is required. And uh, we, we also find this tucked away in the Gospels where Jesus was asked the question, you know, teacher, what is the greatest commandment? And he said that you're to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and then to love your neighbor as yourself. And if we're going to love our neighbor as ourself, we, we've got to put actions to our words. So the second thing that we notice here is that hearing is not enough. But notice thirdly. Thirdly, I want you to look at verse 25, and what I want you to see here is not only hearing, but also doing. Look at verse 25. But one who looks intently at the perfect law the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer. This man will be blessed in what he does. One of my uh, former pastors used to say uh, that the Bible is this book uh, that's not only, it's the only perfect thing that your imperfect hands will ever touch this side of heaven, the Bible. Uh, It's the only perfect thing that your imperfect hands will ever touch this side of heaven. And that's exactly what James refers to here in verse 25. He, he refers to the word as the perfect law, the law of liberty. So what is that law? It's the Bible. It's God's word. Here's a scripture you can write down. Psalm 19. Psalm 19. You can look at verse 7 there speaking of uh, God's word. Uh, so the Bible is the law of liberty because it liberates you and it sets you free from uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil from a sin, bondage, and captivity. So instead of just glancing at God's Word, what does James say here? He says you are to look intently at the Word. The one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty. So not only do you first and foremost recognize who you are in light of who God is, that you are a sinner that's uh, sinned against a holy, righteous God, you repent of your sins, You trust Jesus with your life. The Bible says when you do that, the Holy Spirit comes to live in your heart and your life, to to dwell in you, to occupy, occupy you. You've been bought with a price, therefore you're to glorify God with your body. And then what you must do is you must seek to honor and glorify God with your life, to become less like yourself and more like Jesus. And the way that we do that, listen to me here, The way that we do that, the way that I do that, the way that you do that is by continually looking intently at God's Word. God's Word, uh, write this down, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, the Bible is uh, living and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to, to pierce and penetrate to the depths of the soul, to the joint and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So it's not just you and I glancing at God's Word, but it's us continually, continually looking at God's Word. We've got to study and devote ourselves to the Lord, to His Word, uh, to continuing in His Word, to hearing His Word, to heeding His Word, to acting upon it, not just being hearers of the Word, but actually being doers of of the word. So we we live this out. How do we do that? How do we live this out? Well, we do so by not forgetting what we hear and then by acting on what we hear. Uh, And keep in mind with uh, the things that we're facing in our society today, there are those around us that may have needs. Well, our responsibility as believers is to not just hear that they have needs, but to to do to help them meet those needs. And I think of no better example here than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He he met the needs of people around him and he taught them truth. Uh, write this down as well. Acts chapter 1. Uh, Luke says of all that Jesus began to both do and teach. So Jesus didn't just teach a bunch of things that we're to do. No, Jesus did those things and he taught those things 
as well. So uh, the, the last thing we find in these verses here is this promise of a, a blessing that's given to those who hear and do. Look at what he says here. Uh, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer. And notice what he says in the latter part of verse 25. This man or this woman will be blessed in what he does, in what she does. So we don't just hear, we act upon it. Uh, and, and, and with that in mind, let me just ask you this morning, what is it that God desires from you? What does he desire from you? Well, he desires your obedience, total obedience to him. But he desires that you not just hear his word, but you heed his word. You become not just a hearer, but a doer of the word. I've said this and I'll say it again. Uh, the church is not shut down. Uh, we're, we're, we're not shut down. I mean, the church, even through this pandemic, has continued to meet. And we're going to continue to meet via online currently. But uh, soon we're going to be able to, to gather back in the house of the Lord. And I'm looking forward to that time when we can do that. But until that time comes, we just continue to hear the word of God and be doers of the word of God. And that's my challenge for us this morning. We looked at the necessary qualities and today we've seen the necessary actions. So God has a plan for you. I want you to know that today. And understanding His plan begins by hearing His Word and devoting in your heart and your life to being a doer of the Word. Uh, what, what a practical, practical word for us this morning. And I love that about James is that uh, that's why I've entitled this series Practical Living because it's practical advice that you and I need to hear and to be reminded of, and we need to heed. We need to do what God has instructed us to do. Well, I hope that's been a blessing to you this morning. Let me hop over here and say hey to a few folks that have joined us. And uh, I would invite you to just like this video, if you will, and, and share it on your Facebook page. If you don't like it, hey, you can give me a sad face there. Uh, that may make me sad, but uh, if it's been a blessing to you, I would encourage you to like it. And just share it on your uh, Facebook page, and hopefully that can be an encouragement to others. So let me pop over here and say hey to some folks that are watching us. Uh, hey, Betty, how are you today? Thank you for joining us. Miss Linda, good to see you. Uh, Miss Beebe uh, Parker, good to see you. Hey, Miss Beebe, tell Mr. Benny he did a, a fine job Sunday morning. I really appreciate him taking the time to, to do that, uh, to share about Memorial Day. If you've not yet seen that, you can go over to our church's Facebook page. And you can see uh, uh, Mr. Benny's uh, uh, Memorial Day tribute, uh, which is really, really good. Hey, Brooke, good to see you. Uh, Miss Brenda, good to see you. Uh, Miss Brenda, I did get your prayer request, and we're, we're going to continue to pray for your grandson there uh, as well. Miss Sylvia, good to see you. Hey, Rose, thank you for, for joining us as well. Let me see if I can navigate over here. Beth, my eyes are probably looking all over the screen trying to navigate through this. Um, Good to see you, Beth. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, Suzanne. Thank you for uh, tuning in for our Bible study. There's my pastor buddy, Charlie Carroll. Thank you for joining me there, brother. Appreciate that. Uh, hey, Beverly. Good to see you today. There's one of my former students, Austin. Good to see you today, man. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, Joe. Good to see you. And uh, Miss Gracie, good to see you as well. Well, thank you all for for tuning in and, and being a part of this. If I didn't call your name, I just, just don't see it listed here. But thank you for tuning in and for being a part of our Tuesday study. If you do not have a, uh, a church home or are not a part of any type of Wednesday Bible study, I want to invite you to join me tomorrow night. We're, uh, we've just finished a series on world religions and cults, uh, but I'm going to be starting a new series coming soon. But we'll be meeting tomorrow night on our church's Facebook page. And I'll post a, a link to that in the comment section below. But uh, thank you all for joining us today. I hope you have a great day. Let me pray for you, and then we'll be dismissed. Father, thank you for everybody that's tuned in today. Thank you for these uh, practical words from James uh, and, and just for what we've learned on these necessary qualities and the necessary actions. Lord, I pray that we would determine in our hearts to not just be hearers of the word, but we would, would seek to be doers as well. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with our country as we're in this phase right now of, of uh, many businesses reopening. 
Lord, I pray that the, the number of coronavirus cases would continue to decrease. And God, that you would continue to, to be with those that are, uh, Lord, uh, making difficult decisions, God. Uh, that you would be with the, the small business owners, Lord, and, and our nurses and doctors, Lord. And just everybody that's been affected and impacted by this, God. I pray that you would continue to watch over them. And I pray above all else that they would know that you're God. We love you and we thank you today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. I love you. Hope you have a great day. And Lord willing, I'll see you soon.